Uh, my name is Mark and I'm a medium. So that means that I communicate with those who are now in the spirit world. Um, I do this um, actually daily. So mediumship, what I offer is a nonverbal sort of communication. Um, the spirit world will communicate with me through feelings, through thought. They may show me images. So I kind of play psychic charades, if you will, with the souls. Um, I always say too, I'm a part of a process. Um, it's really a process between two worlds sort of coming together, um, kind of like a long distance phone call for sure, um, but um, I get to be a part of that process in the middle, which is why we call it medium, um, that we see two worlds still be able to have that care and that love and be able to communicate like that. So I also like to demonstrate um, in public my mediumship so that I can reach a, a bigger or broader audience. Um, I think it's important to always show the work, basically, um, and then, you know, have the people sort of listen after. Um, and that's kind of what I offer. So a psychic medium really is sort of a redundant word. Um, it's been around for not too long, I would say like four decades. Um, a medium is a psychic, plus it has the ability to communicate with those in the spirit world. Um, so about three or four decades ago, mediums started calling themselves psychic mediums because people were very confused. They thought, oh, a medium could only communicate with those in the spirit world and not do psychic or provide psychic readings. So they started actually to coin that term to really help people understand, oh, I can do both. Um, a medium really... Um, when you're doing a reading or when you're providing a psychic reading, especially as a medium, it's really a soul-to-soul -soul sort of blending. And so when someone says they're psychic, the word actually is psychic from the Greek word meaning soul. Um, so you know, the psychic really blends with the soul of the person in the, in the physical world, while the medium has to do that with the soul in the spirit world. So it's sort of a redundant word. Um, and I, I'm hoping that maybe that will change a bit, um, but for right now it, it seems to get people who don't understand anything about this um, to understand what they offer too. So the very first, probably the most profound experience I had was I was three years old and um, my grandma had just passed away. and um, Me being so young, I, I don't know if I quite understood that, but I remember as if it was yesterday, I was napping, it had to be about 5 p.m. in the winter, and I just kind of sat up in my bed, and uh, I looked over to my father's room, and I saw a woman standing there, I was like, that's, that doesn't look like, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that looks like my grandma, um, and she looked like a hologram, basically, so I could see her as if she was as real as us. Um, her hair was the same, her clothing was about the same. And uh, I was totally captivated, but all of a sudden she vanished. And so I thought to myself, hmm, maybe if I kind of looked the other direction, she'd come back. Maybe, maybe that's what's going on. So I did that. Um, I looked the other direction and there she reappeared. And so I looked back and we played basically peekaboo. Um, but for whatever reason, I could feel her personality and I just knew it was her. So, you know, of course, me being that young, I went to my parents and told them all about it. Um, they told me not to talk about it. They said it was that was just not a subject matter that anyone should or can talk about. Um, so you know, I would grow up kind of battling that. I would have, I would hear her all the time. I would see her in and out, but I didn't have an environment that was really welcoming. So despite the effort of my parents and family to sort of say, "Don't talk about it," I still talked about it. Um, another experience that I had. I was actually providing a lot of psychic readings and uh, one day someone came to me and really they only wanted to know about romance and all of a sudden you know I saw a young male standing beside her and I told her do you know what a medium is and she said I have no idea what you're talking about and I told her well you have a little visitor here and I described the male to her in detail who he was what the age was of passing um, his hobbies and she just started to cry and so all of a sudden out of that experience he sort of came out of my thought bubble if you will and was in the room <laughs> so I was 
I, I kind of knew that it was possible for me uh, to do mediumship, but I really hadn't owned it yet. But when this young spirit man was in the room and walked up to me, I thought, oh boy, I have something here. And he just sort of touched me on my right temple. And I told her, I said, did this young male pass from a, a gunshot to the right temple? And she said, absolutely, he did. And so she was like, I'm a believer. I didn't believe in anything before you, and now I do. And I'm like, okay. So that sort of galvanized me to really start to say, maybe I should take this a little bit more serious instead of just doing the psychic. Um, so probably those are two of the most profound experiences I can think of. Because they're people. Right. And a lot of people don't really think about it. Like, they think, oh, they're just energy. But they have a story. I mean, our guides really have past lives too. So what were they in the past life? Yeah, that's a good point. Why did they choose you? Right. Why did you choose them? And so that's like the beginning of that. And people just skip it. They don't think it's important. But if you don't get that relationship, that's like a, a friend or a family member, you'll never bond. And so that, that bonding with the guide, if you can kind of let them take you on a journey to find out who they are, they'll actually be a stronger connection but see, okay. the old school mediums did this. The new school mediums stopped doing that. So hmm. the old school mediums would be so into that that you could see like footprints. I mean, they would blend so much that normal yeah. people would be like, why is there shadows there? They're like, that's my guide. So, I mean, there's so much that we've lost because people are scared because they started saying, oh, you know, that stuff is too, too much. It's too, what, you might be possessed or all these other crazy things. So we kind of went away from all that. So anyone who's trying to really develop their own intuition, their own mediumship, or be a healer, because we need more healers, I believe, we need more spiritual healers or energy healers, holistic healers on the planet. Um, but the one thing, the most important thing is they have to know themselves. So really when we're talking about psychic or mediumship or spiritual healing, it's really about the soul. But if you don't know your own soul, you'll never know the soul of someone else's for sure. Um, so there is a sensitivity too that you can get So if you're not really balanced in your emotions and you're not in harmony with your soul and what your life has planned for you It could really take you to a place where you feel too lonely and you actually may be able to Maybe to be too sensitive to those who are actually trying to help So I, I do think that there's a lot of times where people who are trying to become um, light workers and healers that they don't take enough time to really understand themselves. They don't take enough time to really stay balanced. And so, you know, it will only really fulfill you 70% of the time. So the other 30%, you have to stay human. So a lot, of, a lot of the new people coming in will really rush in. And I often wonder why they're doing it. Sometimes are they in it for their own sake or are they in it for their other reasons? And so, you know, knowing yourself being more balanced in your emotions is absolutely the most important thing. But being able to get quiet too um, is something else that I see missing a lot. Um, so it's funny because I have a lot of new mediums that come to me and ask me questions. I have a lot of new light workers, healers, that will really ask me, what can I do to get better? What can I do to develop? And it's like, well, you forgot yourself. And so they're surprised by that. They're like, well, I didn't know I had to. <laughs> and it's like, well, actually you do. Um, because really all the stuff, all the aspects of, of the spiritual gifts come from the soul. So if you can get quiet with it, the soul will tell you where you're supposed to go, where and when and how. Um, with it, if, if it's just psychic, if it's the healing, if it's the mediumship, the soul dictates when, where, how and it's not from the conscious mind. Um, so I know I have a lot of people that want to be clairaudient or clairvoyant, and maybe the soul doesn't want that. So, you know, that's why it's so very important to get quiet. You don't necessarily have to be a meditator in the way that you're crossing your legs and folding your hands, but maybe it's walking at a park, maybe it's getting quiet in nature, maybe it's washing the dishes, whatever it is. Um, you need that quiet time because without it, you know, the conscious mind can tell you something that, you know, will put you off a bit. All right, so that's... 
So I actually get asked a lot uh, about grounding, um, and grounding is really a term um, that we're actually seeing, thank God, science and universities starting to do studies on grounding. Um, but basically, it's um, from a scientific level, they're starting to say that it has to do with negative and positive ions and how that affects the body. And really, you know, grounding can be as simple as just sitting and, you know, being out in nature, somewhere like that for a good, you know, 10, 20 minutes. And really, it starts, you see on a, on a physical level, that inflammation will be reduced, cortisol levels get reduced. So there's a lot of physically medical benefits to grounding. Grounding can also be achieved by walking, um, eating things, kind of doing things that um, sort of take your mind off of stress, anxiety. Um, but from a spiritual perspective and emotional perspective, grounding is incredibly important, especially if you're going to do this work. If you're a light worker, a healer, a medium, or a psychic, and you don't ground, you can often feel like you're sort of in a cloud. And so if you're in a cloud too much, you might float away. Uh, so grounding is essential. Um, and it also, it sort of disconnects you from not just the negativity, but also disconnects you to the work. So I like to think of, you know, mediums and healers and psychics having a battery. And if the battery never gets recharged, it'll just be depleted. And then you'll be working on a very, very low battery. Um, so that distraction um, is really kind of like a mindfulness. And so grounding would be all that and above. So, so many people though will try one way of doing grounding and it doesn't work. So there's really no one way to do this. Um, if it's walking, if it's playing with, you know, a puppy, if it's being in a yard, if it's doing something like that, um, anything that really can bring you back and sort of being totally present, in my opinion, is grounding. Um, a lot of people too will ask me, well, what do I do when it gets too cold outside? Well, there's other ways of doing it. Um, so I wouldn't go to like any busy grocery stores to try to go walk because I have people ask that too. Um, you gotta remember, grounding, the really intention of it is not the actual activity itself. It's really, are you totally present? Are you totally in the here and now? And you're not thinking about the past, you're not drifting off to the future, you're totally here. And if you can do that, well, you're gonna ground yourself. So I do thankfully have some other light workers that really have a vision and the vision is really um, to sort of more or less come together and not be so divisive as we can be sometimes. So really uh, when we talk about what the actual goal or the hope is, it's really can we come together and you know I really like talking about the aura because it, you can kind of blend auras together. And really when you can, your intention is to do that, you can sort of empathize and, and understand other people. So really on the earth there is a, a really a calling for more of, and I hate to say it, but really the auras to blend together so that we are more in harmony. You know, you know, I don't want to get rid of all religions and all dogmas, but sometimes it can be also a distraction. So, you know, I think we can, keep some of the elements and some of the aspects of what you know the past has told us from some of the wisdom and the teachings but maybe sometimes put away the books and where are we at with it you know there are some things that need to be revised um, I do think that some dog was need a facelift for sure um, and you know we are humans so I do believe too that if you're a light worker and you want to be you know doing a spiritual work that you must be a humanitarian first because that is the most important aspect. And then, you know, that spiritual side will definitely come out after. But I think we miss that a lot. I think we try to skip that and try to be spiritual or off into the distance and kind of neglect and forget um, each, each other, really. So there is, I think, a, a bigger calling for an awakening. I do think more people are becoming more spiritual. And, you know, keeping some of the philosophies of the past, some of that, and also adding in some other wisdom because everything improves and changes. Um, so I do think that we're getting more people to sort of open up more. There are more channelers on the planet, I believe. Um, there's more of a connection. Thank God we have the internet. 
I do believe that must be a, a divine a sort of inspiration for us that we got that because now light workers and spiritual people can communicate with people all over the world and that wasn't available before. So you do have that more of the blending, so to speak, and the changing and, and sort of the merging of different philosophies. So there will be more of that as we go on and less criticism in my belief. So although we see right now a time of contrast and there is quite quite a lot of contrast, some violence, some other negativity. There is the opposite of that is too is, is arising. So um, the new generation, my, my hope is that the new generation can kind of come together too. Um, I always say that history doesn't repeat itself but it definitely rhymes. Um, so uh, what will the next generation take from it? Hopefully a new way. You know, they don't have to copy off of us. They don't have to say, oh, you know, Mark did it this way and that's the way it goes. If you find yourself um, talking to someone who says this is the only way, run the other direction. So the new generation will have to take what we have and, and change it a bit, all for the better, um, and, and in a way that it sort of is more inclusive. You know, we're not all meant to be mediums. We're not all meant to be psychics. But maybe some of us are more healers than the others. So we need the diversity because then we can reach more people. So that's really my hope for the future too. So people can contact me by going to my website, marktroymedium.com. I also highly recommend and encourage people to find me on YouTube. Uh, I have a channel there where I come up with all kinds of different topics. And it's really a free resource for people because I want to give something that's sort of my volunteering, that's sort of my give back. Um, but I have all kinds of topics on there. So it's YouTube, you can just type in Mark Troy Medium. I'm on Twitter at MarkTroyMED. Follow me, you know, tweet me, all those things.